Holy good. What? But I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. Uh, 33 motors on one machine. How insane is that? Well, all these parts are in-house manufactured. Like you can make an entire CNC machine in here. No, I can even show it to the competition because I think nobody's able to do it. See, this is all going into one machine. Because we do our own spindle because no one is crazy enough to produce spindle for us. Bonjour, aujourd'hui nous allons à partir et la adventure. Was that even close? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Dang it, all right, we'll stick to English then. Guys, today I'm gonna take you on a journey. How a bunch of farmers in the mountains of Switzerland making watch parts in their downtime went from, from this Swiss machine in the 1800s to 140 years later making crazy machines like you see behind me. Which right now I'm pretty much just gonna call the Terminator because look at this thing, I mean really, it's Crazy. I'm gonna be honest, I am extremely excited. This is so cool. Like I am hardcore dorking out right now. <laughs> it's quite amazing here. Do you see a part? Just look into it. Oh my gosh, you're not going to see this on the camera. <laughs> Can you see the little parts bouncing around in there? So that's the size of, of this one. It's here. We can take it out. Maybe you can take it out, yeah? Yeah, it's on my finger. Oh my gosh, I can't even see that 3000's diameter yeah. on the front. Wow, that looks perfect. These guys here, they make even their own loops. This is also done on the Tornos machine. Really? Here, let me compare them. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that little diameter. That is insane. It's, yeah. it's like 10% the gap between my fingerprint. Yeah. It's so cool. And this was done on a Nano? Yep. A Nano 4, I'm guessing? Yeah. And I, I show you the limits of the machine. I can even show it to the competition because I think nobody's able to do it. That's the material. You see that? The diameter is, sorry, it's a millimeter, huh? 0 0.165 diameter. Yeah, that's about 8,000. Yeah? So that's already thin. That's the material here. There's not a challenge. The challenge is to put that on the top of it, on the Wait, tip. this ran through a guide bushing? Yes, yes, imagine it. And that's the original part here, but you cannot see it. Yeah? So that, you see that? Yeah, it looks like a deburring tool yeah, almost. Yeah, exactly. That's the machine. So this is the limit of the things that can be machine. I, I agree with you saying that that's the limit. Yeah. yeah, I would challenge any other company to try to match that. That's pretty ridiculous. Can you, can you imagine to feed that? Holy cow, look at this right here. This is what we call a V8. <laughs> this is a trolley that is ready to be pulled out to a multi spindle machine, so to an 826. So Jeez, these these insane. spindles will be built into the multi spindle machines right out here. Welcome to visit the spindle department here. My name is Jens and uh, Jens Ting. I'm actually the uh, CSO's head of sales and marketing here at Tornos. And basically right here, Donny, you are the uh, center of, of any Swiss type machine because it's the heart piece of the machine. It's the spindles. And we build thousands of these of spindles every Every year really? where, where we build the counter spindle the main spindle and all that goes into every single machine so check out what we have over here we have the different types of spindles for the different models Jeez. is it cool if i like can i am i allowed to touch them and play you around can, a little bit here you can you can all right that is smooth. Every single spindle that we actually produce in this department that has more than 10,000 RPM has what we call hybrid bearings. Means that we actually put in uh, steel cages and ceramic balls just to make sure that we can run at high speeds without overheating. Guys, the motor is inside of this. There is no exterior motor like you've seen on other machines. This thing is literally encased in the spindle. Uh, In-house manufactured. So yes, Tornos really builds the heart of the machine all by itself for all the types of machines. See, this is all going into one machine and the fact that these are all going to be in a circle working together all at the same time <laughs> that's why i call it the terminator for myself i'm brice hangley i'm working there since uh, 2010 i'm the marketing manager actually i'm helping yvon in a way helping to sell the machine he produced uh, welcome my name is yvon boucher i'm in charge of the production of machine here in uh, switzerland so in this area we are producing swiss nanos evo deco swiss deco but also multi swiss and the milling machines there's a few pretty cool machines you're working on here yeah can we uh, can we go check out the multi swiss uh, yeah for sure oh, and that one's got me super <laughs> excited just looking at these things being built, it is insane how many Fanuc motors are on these things. Right? This is a multi Swiss, the 826. We can see that we have eight spindles. So let's break that down real quick. 
So you have eight spindles, so that's eight motors for the eight spindles. You have yeah. eight Z-axis, so that's eight motors for the Z-axis, that's 16 yeah. motors. You have eight X-axis, so that's another eight, so that's 24 motors. Six Y-axis, so that's 30 motors. You have the sub-spindle motor, so that's 31. Then you have X and Z on that, so that's 33. <laughs> 33 different Fanuc motors on one machine. <laughs> That is insane to me. Man, did, did I did I miss any? Is that right? Is roughly no, no, 33, no. right? Uh, it's, it's right, it's right. <laughs> Here, all these bars will be moving around, rotating, so every single operation after it's done, the whole drum right here is actually gonna rotate from station to station. This is a modern marvel. I mean, really, it's so cool to see this getting made. Our organization here, and we have two assembly lines. Both lines, we can produce each product. That means we can have Swiss Nano on this side, or Swiss Nano on the other side depending on what we need. High flexibility and our production line is share 15 different phases and each phase is one day job for one or two guys. Oh, is that what these numbers are up here I've been seeing? Exactly. Oh, wow. okay, so you can see that there's a, like, a number three. That means that that machine's on its third day, right? Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Leave it to the Swiss to keep things really simple and nice. <laughs> so all of this that I'm, we're about to walk over to is just one day of assembly. Yes. That's one day between that and that. They've added all this stuff and they've got the, pretty much the tubes in there. This is where the material is going to go, right? And all these different tubes. All these are going to support the material as it runs. It's like, look how perfectly they put this together. I mean, that is craftsmanship right there. That's starting to look like the Terminator here. So this thing on top is when the multi Suisse has integrated a fridge. When the customer has, a, has an heat exchanger into this factory, we just have the connection, but we still have to test the machine. So we go with a fridge on top of the machine. Look at the manufacturing power you have here, guys. Each one of these machines has eight spindles, right? That's replacing eight Swiss machines, potentially. So you have eight spindles here, eight spindles here, another eight spindles here, 24 spindles, and then even one more multi-Swiss at the end here. This is 32 spindles from end to end, just in these four machines. I mean, if you try to replace this with 32 Swiss machines, you'd have to take up so much space. So that's just one of the many advantages that you get here with the multi-Swiss, to have eight machines combined into such a small footprint. Yeah, so you can load up to eight tons of material on here. With the bundle bar loader with an overhead crane, and then step by step, the machine will take one bar to the other and place it into this ladder. You can run basically forever almost. what a CNC control should look like. You know, a nice, sophisticated, modern computer. I love that. So pumped to get this machine. This is gonna be a bunch of fun once we get this in Texas. Hey dude, what are you working on? Hey, hi, I'm making a setup of the Swiss Deco. What kind, of, what kind of part are you making? So right now we are making um, this kind of part. This is for your hip. This goes into your body. hip? Yeah. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? That would not be a good day. No, no. not today. <laughs> not a good day. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. The whole turret is the B axis on this machine. You got to realize here, most machines B axis is like three or four tools, right? And a hanging gang. This entire turret rotates. That means you could theoretically have like 12 tools on your B axis as opposed to four or whatever on a normal machine. Well, a machine like this runs off of three programs that are running simultaneously. And you can see them displayed on the screen right here. The Tyson software actually will separate the program according to which weight codes you have. And when I select a part of the program, what's really nice is you can see down here on the Gantt chart where that is. So if I select down here, it'll move over here. If I select up here, it'll show you where you're at in the program. That's super nifty for a CNC control. Okay, you are going to meet a close friend. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it smells like manufacturing in here. So we have this fast M system who fits 24-7. Ta-da! This four axis Yazda, and that's where we make old, basically almost everything. Oh wow, are these like parts of the castings that get assembled out of exactly, the main? Exactly, exactly, wow. exactly. We do those uh, cubic fixture, so we can uh, basically load one fixture and then the machine will take care of this and this and this and this and this and this. What's really crazy about this room is this one big huge machining cell. That's the CNC right there. These are the tools for it. And then against this whole wall is a bunch of different pallets depending on what kind of casting they want to make for what machine they need to make at the time. Like you can make an entire CNC machine in here. And here you can see we're actually drilling through the the barrel right now. Oh, is that for, that's for a multi-Swiss 6, isn't it? Exactly. Wow. They're making a multi-Swiss 6 drum right now. And they actually finish machine everything. It's kind of wild to watch these machines really be born. Look at that tool changer. It's that whole thing. See it changing this tool right now? You can hear the air cleaning the spindle. It's probably going to flap the tool. Yep. Puts it back in there. Comes all the way back. Puts the tool in that little crib. And that tool's next. <laughs> 
Yeah, that is a monster machine. Yeah, look at all these different tools here they have for all the different parts they make. 380 tool in the tool magazine, probably. All these tools, everything you see here is what's required to make all the different castings that Tornos has in their machines. Right here is the, uh, the slotting tool she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this pallet changer here. They have every single pallet in here right now ready to go for every single machine that they make. I'm sure they just call it up on their machine, pull it in, make whatever part they want when needed. And it goes all the way down this room. I mean, pallets, pallets, pallets. And they just brought out the main drum that holds all eight spindles for a multi-Swiss. That is super cool to see that pop out like that and come into life. That's some precision work there. The oil for the hydrostatic system will be fed through the center via oh. this oil through the spindle. So that's what all these holes are right here, right? So the oil goes in here and it comes through all these holes and that's what makes the spindles flow. There's two people in here that are running this whole cell making all these different castings. This is the high level automation required to pump out machines like Tornos does. I mean, you can't make machines quickly unless you automate everything like this. So they take it to the level needed to get machines across the whole world. This looks familiar, doesn't it? I think you know this machine. Our guy Chris knows this machine. He'd be super stoked to see this. So what is this making here? Is this some part of the component for the spindle? Spindle parts, the barrel as well. They drill the hole, but they have to still grind it. So we are doing all the grinding for the internal part of the spindle because we do our own spindle because no one is crazy enough to produce spindle for us because you have to basically open it at 15,000 RPM and no one wants to do that. Plus the volume are too small. So we do our spindle, we do our own spindle for on all the machines from start to finish. Yeah, so look at this. Look how deep of a hole they're drilling on this machine right here. So this is actually a spindle liner for a multi-Swiss. Look how deep they have to drill through this thing. Hey, Metatoyo, we found you in Switzerland. Looks like your products rock across the whole world. We keep the manufacturing process in-house and we have invested uh, recently in this uh, beautiful Studer. We do all the internal part of the spindle that needs to be grind and uh, that's including the Swiss type and the multi-spindle, of course, and also the big barrel of the multi. It goes on this one. That's pretty cool. It's cool to see it out here in the field making parts for a machine that I work on. Hey guys, shout out to United Grinding. Your machines are so awesome. Only the best Swiss company in the world would use them. That's before and that's after. And they do the grinding of the thread, external grinding, internal grinding with the machine. Do basically everything with this machine. That's yeah. a S41 can do all. I'm almost scared to hold this because I swear if I drop it, I'll feel really bad. So I'm just going to put this back. There are parts on top of parts on top of parts that are all ready to go into Tornos machines right now. They make everything themselves here. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. And Tornos takes that to a whole nother level. They make their whole spindles here. Go check it out in their showroom right now. They're actually filming a internal training video. <laughs> We're just gonna give you guys a sneak peek of this because I don't wanna to reveal too much because eventually we are probably gonna get one of these machines in there, but check this thing out. It's the Evo Deco 10, but this has four programs that run simultaneously. This is as close to being like a screw machine killer. And it's the only CNC I've ever seen that actually can keep up with that and is really cost effective in a small envelope like this. Coming soon to a Titans of CNC video near you. <laughs> this thing is almost as wide as a human person. If I'm a CNC machine, you know, I'm not the skinniest guy to put in front of this thing, but it's less than two of me. It's like 1.5 Donnie's. And then it's like seven Donnie's long. Really small amount of force space. This guy on the machine finished his apprentice this last summer. And how long does that take to do? Four years. Uh, his exam was on uh, the production of a full nano until stage nine. So he had to pretty much build a nano. Yeah, the so exam was to produce a machine. <laughs> That's that's pretty impressive for one person. It's like they're trying to make people into Swiss army knives. Nah? Yeah. Nah? Oh, nah? See what I did? Oh, nah? Oh. Nah? Oh. The birth of a CNC machine right there. <laughs> How cool is that? Obviously when these yeah, things run, this guy can't stand here forever and you know use his power drill. So we're gonna, as we go down the line, we're gonna add some fan duct motors and make people's lives a little bit easier. Let's go to station two. I mean, it already looks way different. Same machine, right? Yeah, exactly the same machine. Oh, we, just flipped up? Exactly. Okay. And then we mount the spindles. Look at this little spindle. Look at this thing in here. <laughs> How tiny this is. It's like just a little bit bigger than my finger. <laughs> Perfect for making watch parts or any small parts, really. This is awesome. So they've added the spindle here. The spindle and the counter spindle, uh, yeah. Yeah, I had, to, I had to learn that lingo when we first got the machines. The, uh, <laughs> it's not a sub spindle, it's a counter spindle because it has the same power as the main spindle. Exactly. Right? Like that's pretty much it? That's pretty much it, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. look at that, just a whole day. You could take a machine from that over there. So all this being added takes just one day. 
Is this a fully assembled nano? Yeah, still some uh, option to build in from stage 10. Basically on the green, on the green stage, we start to move the axis with the command of the machine. So basically from day 10, it's actually like a functional machine that can move around and stuff like that. Exactly. On 11, it's a uh, running in. The machine run by yeah. itself during 26 hours. And then on this stage, we make a test part. On each machine produced on our assembly line, we produce a test part to check the geometry, the reliability of the machine, and that all is okay for the next stages. So this is crazy, right? We're in the cafeteria at Tornos, and even the cafeteria of this place has a huge history behind it. The tiles on the floor, those are the original tiles from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Where we're standing right now is actually where they used to assemble the machines back in the early 1900s. This is built right next to a river, and there's a wheel that goes in the water. You come out here, and you can see there's the main river right there, and then they've redirected the water to come right here, what leads to the turbine. Yeah, right, so here's the actual river, and here's where they broke it off. That wheel turning led to a bunch of different transmissions that led to pulleys and belts. But in the early days, this was this wheel that made the whole mechanism start turning so that with the belts, they could operate uh, the machines that produced the parts for the Swiss type machine. <laughs> That's so awesome. And to this day, they still use that same technology to generate electricity for the power of their cafeteria. It's really cool when you get to the back of the cafeteria here, you can actually see one of the very first Swiss machines ever made. This one wasn't made in this building, but it was made in 1875. And if you come back here, you can actually see a Swiss machine that was made in this building back in the early 1900s. This particular one is from 1900, but they started making Swiss machines on that side of the cafeteria back in 1891. And when you look at this, this is one of the main reasons why I think Tornos really is the OG, right? I mean, they were making these machines back in the early 1900s. You have Swiss manufacturers now who started in the 80s. You know, it's very easy to go up to a CNC machine and be like, oh, this is cool, yeah, it works. But then when you find out that like some guy in Switzerland had to redirect water to turn a turbine just to make the first parts for watches and had to go through all these crazy groundbreaking inventions it really makes you look at things differently you know absolutely yeah. no we're only halfway through that's what's crazy we've yeah. gotten a lot of stuff done in like three days i can't thank you enough tornos this museum was super cool i really hope you enjoyed our video if you did please hit that like button subscribe and don't be stupid ring that notification bell bye <laughs> help your life change your life so one yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no I definitely not <laughs> yes yeah typically you want to avoid that oh my gosh that's loud <laughs>